deal with a haunting story of violence and passion of a man and woman whose love was torment and whose very lives were doomed. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we bring you Mr. Montgomery Cliff, starring in Wuthering Heights. This is the Ford Theater. The Ford Theater, a full hour of the finest dramatic entertainment with celebrated stars of Broadway and Hollywood, is presented by the Ford Motor Company, builders of Lincoln and Mercury cars, Ford trucks and farm tractors, and the 1949 Ford car, the fashion car of the year, the car with the new look in style and the new feel in driving. When you drive a Ford, you'll feel the difference. Now to introduce tonight's program, here is the director of the Ford Theater, Fletcher Martin. Tonight, we bring you the brooding magic of Emily Bronte's classic love story, Wuthering Heights. Once heard, this story can never be mislaid in one's memory. You cannot forget Heathcliff, handsomely sinister with his dark heart and gypsy eye. Nor can you forget Cathy, ardent and beautiful and wild. As for the setting, the fearful immensity of the moorlands in the north of England as the 18th century died... It remains in the mind like a returning nightmare. In fact, it is difficult to forget any part or person in this story of a tormented love. And tonight we're pleased to have with us a new young star of Hollywood and Broadway, Mr. Montgomery Clift in the role of Heathcliff. You'll be hearing Miss Joan Loring as Kathy, with Hester Sondergaard as Ellen, and Hedley Rennie as Hindley. Mr. Clift and company, pleased to begin. Cross Grange. Are you? Well, why aren't you there, then, instead of tramping the moors on a night like this? I fear I'm lost. This dreadful snowstorm, I... Could I get a guide from among your lads? No, you can't. I have only one, and he's needed here. Then I'm afraid I shall have to stay until morning. Do as you please. Thank you for your hospitality. Could you extend it to a cup of tea? Shall I get him some? You already asked for it. I presume this amiable lady is Mrs. Heathcliff? Yes, this amiable lady is my wife. And would it be taxing your remarkable hospitality if I sat down? I hope my hospitality is a lesson to you to make no more rash journeys on these moors. As for staying here tonight, I don't, I don't keep accommodations for visitors. You'll have to share a bed with one of the servants. I should sleep in a chair, sir. No, no. A stranger is a stranger. Guests are so rare in this house, I hardly know how to receive them, I and my dogs. Joseph. Yes, Master Heathcliff. Open up one of the upstairs rooms. Of course. Good night, sir. Good night. Here's a room for you, sir bridal chamber. Well, we'd better close that window and fasten the shutter. The place is like a nice house. It won't stay closed. Not in a storm like this. We'll see. Ah, thank you. Oh. Good night. Good night. That's Miss Cathy's diary you have there, sir. I said good night. Hmm. Well, now. Kathy, her book. Catherine Earnshaw, Catherine Heathcliff, Catherine Linton, 1781. Huh. That's 20 years ago. 
How little did I dream that Hindley would ever make me cry so. Ah, that accursed shutter's blown open again. Who are you? What do you want? Let me in. I am Catherine. I'm lost. Help! Let Help! Me Someone's in. here! Heathcliff! Heathcliff! Holly! Help! Heathcliff! Someone's out there in the storm. A woman. I heard her calling. I saw her. Kathy, she said her name was. Kathy! Kathy, I... The diary, I... Must have been dreaming. Forgive me, Mr. Heathcliff. Get out. Get out of this room. Get out of the house. I, I, Get out! Cassie. Oh, Cassie. Cassie, my darling, where are you? Oh, come back to me once more. Oh, my heart's darling. Hear me this time. Cassie, my own. My Cassie. Lockwood, it's another bitter night. You'd be better off in bed. Thank you, Ellen. I'm all right here, in front of the fire. What caused the upset at Wuthering Heights last night, sir? I had a dream. I thought I heard a voice calling. Then I saw it. Uh, my senses were disordered. It was nothing. It was Kathy. Who is Kathy? A girl who died. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe that life comes back after it's died and calls again to the living. Maybe if I told you her story, you'd change your mind about the dead coming back. Maybe you'd know, as I do, that there is a force that brings them back if their hearts were wild enough in life. Tell me about her, Ellen. Well, it began 50 years ago when I was a young girl in the service of Mr. Earnshaw, Kathy's father. Wuthering Heights was a lovely place in those days, full of sunshine and youth and happy voices. Then one day, Mr. Earnshaw found a boy starving in the streets of Liverpool, kicked and bruised and almost dead. He took him home to be brought up with his own two children, Kathy and Hindley. He was christened Heathcliff. It was the name of a son who had died in childhood. From the very first, he and Kathy were always together. But Hindley hated him. As an instance, I remember Mr. Earnshaw once bought a couple of coats at the parish fair, and Hindley soon fell lame. I don't care, Heathcliff. Mine's lame, and I'm going to ride yours. No, you're not. Give him to me, or I'll go and tell my father how you said you'd turn me out of doors when he died. That's a lie. I never said that. Of course he didn't, Hindley. Oh, it's like you, Cathy, to take his part. You won't be happy until he's cheated us out of everything that belongs to us. You never had a home, you gypsy beggar. Look out, Heathcliff, he's got a rock. Don't come near me. Oh, Hindley, you've killed him. He shan't have what belongs to me. The cult is mine, and I'm going to take him. You gypsy scum. The lame horse is good enough for you. Get up. Oh, are you bad at that? Heathcliff. Don't look like that. I'll pay him back. I don't care how long I wait. If you'll only live long enough for me to pay him back. Shame, Heathcliff. It's for God to punish wicked people. We should forgive them. <laughs> Kathy. Oh, Heathcliff. You should smile all the time. You're so handsome when you smile. Do you remember what I've always told you? That you're a prince in disguise. Tell it to me again. It's true. Your father was emperor of China, and your mother an Indian queen. And you were kidnapped and brought to England by wicked sailors. All the princes I've ever read about had castles. There is your castle. Look, Heathcliff. Over there. You mean those rocks? Penistone Crag? Yes. We'll take possession and never leave. We'll live in it forever. We two against the world. Oh, Cassie. No one but you can make me happy. No one in the whole world. Not so very long after that, one October evening, 
Old Mr. Earnshaw died quietly in his great armchair, and Hindley became indeed master of Wuthering Heights. Heathcliff, look at this stable. Filthy as a pigsty. Is that the way you do your work? Clean it up. Don't stand there showing your teeth. Give me a hand up. There. I want your work done when I come back at dawn. Ah, uh, you're hoping I won't come back, aren't you? Aren't you? You're hoping I'll fall and break my neck, muttering gypsy curses under your breath. Well, in case I do come back, in case I don't break my neck, Joseph will see you do your work. Oh, yes, I'll see you does it, Master Hindley. I'll see you does it. Here, come back here. The master said you will clean the stables. Master will be angry. <laughs> Cassie, look how the clouds are lowering over Peniston Crag. Mm. It would be dreadful if Hindley ever found out. Found out what? Did you talk to me once in a while? I shouldn't talk to you at all. Look at you, dirty and unkempt and in rags. Why aren't you a man? Why don't you run away? Run away? Thank you. Why aren't you my prince, as we said long ago? Why can't you rescue me, Hindley? You could come back to me when you're rich and take me away. Cassie, come with me now. Where? Anywhere. Oh, and live in haystacks. And go barefoot in the snow and steal our food from the marketplaces. Oh, no, thank you, Heathcliff. That's not what I want. Oh, you just want to send me off. That won't do. I've stayed here and been beaten like a dog, abused and cursed and driven mad. But I stayed just to be near you, even as a dog. And I'll stay till the end. I'll live and die under this rock. Oh, Heathcliff, please. Look at the heather. Oh, smell it. The moors and I will never change, don't you, Kathy? You hear that? Hear what? Music at Brush Cross Grange. The Lintons are giving a party. That's what I want, Heathcliff. Dancing and singing in a pretty world. And I'm going to have it. <laughs> As time went by, Kathy was torn between her uncontrollable passion for Heathcliff and a new life that she found at Thrushcross Range. A new life which included Edgar Linton. I'm ashamed to confess, Edgar, I haven't been homesick one tiny moment. And I never spent a single night away from Wuthering Heights before. It's my vain, foolish hope, Kathy, that you'll be a little homesick for Thrushcross Grange. Just a little. <laughs> Kathy, welcome home. Oh, Ellen. Oh, I've had such a wonderful time. I've been dancing night after night. Look at you, Kathy, like a princess doll. Wherever did you get that beautiful dress? Mr. Linton's sister Isabella lent it to me. It's so lovely. Oh, Edgar, do come in and have a cup of tea. Thank you, my dear. As soon as the horses have been seen through. Come along into the house, Kathy. Oh, oh, it's so good to see you again, Ellen. Kathy. Heathcliff, what are you doing here? Why did you stay away so long? Why? Because I was having a wonderful time. A fascinating, delightful, wonderful time. What are you doing in the front of the house, Heathcliff? Go and look after Mr. Linton's horses at once. Let him look after his own horses. I've already done so. Heathcliff, apologize to Mr. Linton at once. Well, I really... Ellen, bring him some tea, if you please. Oh. Kathy. Yes, Edgar? I simply can't understand why your brother allows that beast of a gypsy to have the run of the house. Indeed. Really? How can you, a gentlewoman, tolerate him under your roof? A roadside beggar giving himself airs of equality. How can you? He belongs under this roof and you'll speak well of him or... Well, get out. Have you lost your senses? Get out, I said. Or stop calling those I love names. Those you love, that stable boy. Yes, yes. Kathy, what possesses you? Do you realize the things you're saying? I'm saying that I hate you. I hate the look of your milk white face. I hate the touch of your soft, foolish hands. Some of that gypsy's evil soul has got into you, I think. Yes, it's true. Now get out. Kathy. Oh, do leave me alone. Stand still, 
while I finish buttoning up your dress. Oh, Ellen, aren't you through yet? Well, what's the matter? Suppose you're not ready when Edgar Linton gets here. Any young man that'll come sniveling back after the way you treated him, you can keep waiting forever. <laughs> He's... Since when are you in the habit of entering my room? I want to talk to you. Go outside, Ellen. I will not. I take orders from Mistress Catherine, not from stable boy. Go outside. Very well. And now, Heathcliff, may I know to what I owe this great honor? He's coming here again. Why do you allow him to come back here? Who? You know who. That stupid fop Edgar Linton. You're really unbearable, Heathcliff. Utterly unbearable. Why are you all dressed up in silk for him? I'm not a child anymore. You can't talk to me that way. I'm not talking to a child. I'm talking to Cathy. My Cathy. Oh, I'm your Cathy. Yes. And I'm to take orders from you, a dirty stable boy. You had your chance to be something else. Now let me go. Yes, tell the dirty stable boy to let go of you. He soils your pretty dress. But who soils your heart? Linton does. Who turns you into a vile, cheap, worldly fool? Linton, you'll never love him, but you let yourself be loved because it pleases your stupid, greedy vanity. Thief or beggar beside the road where all you were born to be. Begging for favors, not earning them, but whimpering for them with your dirty hands. That's all I've ever come to you, a pair of dirty hands. <laughs> Have them where they belong. It doesn't help to strike you. <laughs> Ellen, tell me, has, has Linton gone? Yes, Cliff. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I'm... Are you ill? No, I... Has, has that... Has he gone? He's Cliff, what is it? What have you done? God, I don't know. I struck her. Oh, he's... I want to crawl to her feet and whimper to be forgiven. For loving her, for needing her more than my own life. For belonging to her more than my soul. Oh, he's... Go out by the back door. All right. May I come in? Yes, 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 Kathy. I'm here. I'm coming. Ellen, Kathy, what are you doing here? The kitchen's no place for that dress. Come into the parlor. Oh, no, Ellen. Please come sit down and listen. I have something to tell you. Well, Ellen, Edgar has asked me to marry him. Oh. And what did you say? I said I'd give him my answer tomorrow. Do you love him? Of course. Why? Oh, because, because he's handsome and pleasant to be with. That's not enough. And, and because he's rich. And I shall be the finest lady in the county. Mm. Now tell me how you love him. I, I love the ground under his feet. And the air above his head and everything he touches. And it would be heaven to escape from this disorderly, comfortless place. Well, if Master Edgar and his riches and parties mean heaven to you, what's to stop you from taking your place among the Linton Angels? Ellen, I don't think I belong in heaven. I once dreamt I went there, but it didn't seem to be my home. I broke my heart with weeping to come back to earth, and the angels were so angry they flung me out into the middle of the heath on top of Wuthering Heights. I woke up sobbing with joy. That's it, Ellen. I've no more business marrying Edgar Linton than I have being in heaven. Ellen, what can I do? You're thinking of Heathcliff. He's sunk so low. He gets worse every day. It would degrade me to marry him. What was that? Well, nothing. The wind. Oh. Heathcliff seems to take pleasure in being mean and brutal. And yet, he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Ellen, I am Heathcliff. Everything he suffered, I've suffered. Every happiness he's ever had, I've had too. Oh, Ellen, if everything in the world died and Heathcliff remained, life would still be full for me. Heathcliff! What? Stop! Heathcliff! What's that? He must have been listening. Heathcliff listening to us? Back there in the passage. How much do you think he had? Well, I'm not sure, but I... Think to where you said it would degrade you to marry him. Oh, that's when I heard him close the door. Oh, no. Heathcliff! Heathcliff! 
Heathcliff, Heathcliff, Miss Cathy. Cathy, come in, come in out of the storm. You'll catch your death of cold. Heathcliff! Heathcliff! Oh, Helen, he'll never come back. I know he'll him. He'll come back. No, he won't. I know him. Which way did he go, Josie? Over the moor. Kathy, come in, come in out of the storm. The fool. He should have known I love him. I love him. She's over here, here by this rock. Bring some brandy, quickly. Master Edgar, is she all right? I don't know. I don't know. This is the season when the world seems to be dressing up, when the universal fashion is something bright and new. Trees are turning green, bright flowers are blooming in gardens and on ladies' hats. Even men's neckties are more brightly colored. And in the vanguard of this spring fashion parade is the 1949 Ford, bright and new, with styling as fresh as spring itself. The sleek, trim lines and advanced design of the 49 Ford have won it not only the admiration of millions, but also official recognition as the fashion leader in the world of automobiles. Members of the famous Fashion Academy of New York considered all cars in all price ranges and then awarded the gold medal to the 49 Ford as the fashion car of the year. Your own eyes will tell you that Ford is the leader in the fashion parade. When you look at the 49 Ford and then look at the other new cars of older style, you'll see the difference. You'll see for yourself that this is the only completely redesigned car in its field, that it's the most advanced car in its field, that the new Ford is truly the fashion car of the year. Then when you drive the 49 Ford, you'll feel the difference. You'll feel the change from the harder driving, harder riding, less responsive cars you've been used to. You'll feel the pleasure of driving a car that responds instantly to your touch. You'll feel the comfort of riding in a car that fairly floats over the roughest roads. And you'll feel the pride of owning the fashion car of the year. Before you settle for another new car of older style, drive a 49 Ford. Drive the only completely redesigned car in its field. The most advanced car in its field. The fashion car of the year. When you drive a Ford, you'll feel the difference. The Ford Theater presentation of Wuthering Heights will be resumed after a brief pause for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Fletcher Markle again, continuing tonight's Ford Theater production of Wuthering Heights, starring Montgomery Clift as Heathcliff, with Joan Loring as Kathy. Now, what was it Dr. Kenneth said? Twenty lumps of sugar in a claret glass and one drop of medicine... Is that right, Edgar? Oh, Isabella, of course it isn't. Why don't you pay attention? Well, never mind. I'll go and ask Ellen. Yes, do go ask Ellen by all means. Oh, Isabella is such a darling. But then you've all been so kind. Everyone is so good to me here at the Grange. Well... <laughs> Still, I can't remain forever. It, it seems that Heathcliff has disappeared entirely. Dear Cathy... 
Let me guard you and love you always. Would you love me always? Always. It's so very easy to love you. Because I'm no longer wild and black-hearted and full of gypsy ways. No, why? I... Of course you were right, Edgar. What you said was true. There was a strange curse on me. Something that kept me from being myself. How very dear you are. You know, Kathy, I've never kissed you. Edgar. No one will ever kiss me again but you. No one. I'll be your wife and proud of it. My darling. Oh. Kathy, what is it? What's wrong? A cold wind went across my heart just then. A feeling of doom. It's nothing, darling, I'm sure. Oh, Edgar, I love you. I do. I do. <laughs> felt a cold wind across my heart as I watched them come out of the church. But as the years went on, they were really in possession of a deep and growing happiness. Nothing was her defeat then. Miss Cathy became quite the lady of the manor. For Isabella, she showed great affection and seemed almost overfond of her husband, Edgar Linton. Looks as though you've fallen into a trap, Cathy. <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it? There you are. Checkmate. <laughs> Shall we play another game? If you wish. Edgar, what do you suppose is the matter with the dogs? It's probably one of the servants back from the village, Isabella. Oh. Uh, beg pardon? Yes, Ellen? Uh, Miss Cathy. But what is it? Someone wishes to see you. Ellen, you look as if it were a ghost. It is. Miss Cathy. Heathcliff's come back. Heathcliff? What does he want? He wants to see you. Tell him... Tell him I'm not at home. Kathy, we can't be as cruel as that. Where has he come from, Ellen? America, he said. He's so changed, I didn't recognize him. He's a fine figure of a gentleman. Don't now. stand there prattling, Ellen. Tell him I do not wish to see him. Nonsense, Kathy. He's come a long way. Let's find out if America really has managed to make a silk purse out of our gypsy. Show him in, Ellen. Oh, yes. Oh, suddenly chilly in here. You put another log on the fire, Edgar. Darling, why be nervous? The past is dead. You may smile at him without fear of offending me, because it's my wife who smiles. My dear wife who loves me. Yes. I was silly. Thank you, Edgar. Mr. Linton. Yes, good. How are you, sir? Hello, Kathy. Yes, good. Well... Never seen such a change in a man. I'd not have known you, Heathcliff. You seem to have prospered since our last meeting. Somewhat. Ellen said you'd been to America. Yes. We all wondered where you were. Oh. Have you met my sister? Heathcliff, Miss Linton. How do you do, Miss Linton? Well, Heathcliff, what's brought about this amazing transformation? Did you discover a gold mine in the new world, or perhaps you fell heir to a fortune? Well, perhaps, Mr. Linton, I made it more spectacularly on the English highways. But the truth is, I remembered that my father was the emperor of China, and my mother an Indian queen, and I went to claim my inheritance. It turned out, just as you once suspected, Kathy, I had indeed been kidnapped by wicked sailors and brought to England. Are you visiting here long? I mean, in the village? The rest of my life. I've just bought Wuthering Heights, the house, the cattle, and the moors. You mean that Hindley has sold you the estate? He's not aware of it as yet. I'm afraid it will be somewhat of a surprise to him when he finds out that his gambling debts and liquor bills were all paid up for him by his former stable boy. Or perhaps he will merely laugh at the irony of it. I don't understand how it happened. How could it have happened without Hindley hearing of it? Modesty compelled me to play the Good Samaritan in secret, Mr. Linton. By heavens. This is as underhanded a piece of work as I've ever known. Edgar, please. I suspected that Hindley was in financial difficulties, but not that his holdings were being stolen from him by a stranger. I am neither thief nor stranger. Merely your neighbor, sir. Now I'll say good night. Wait, Heathcliff. Edgar and I have many neighbors whom we receive with friendship and hospitality. 
If you are to be one of them, you are welcome to visit our home. But not with a scowl on your face or an old bitterness in your heart. Thank you. It occurs to me that I've not yet congratulated you on your marriage. I've often thought of it. Allow me to express my delight over your happiness now. Good night. Good night, Heathcliff. Edgar, I think you behaved abominably. I did. And you too, Kathy. I'm dreadfully disappointed in you both. Isabella, what are you talking about? Why, you dismissed him as if he'd been a common servant. Don't tell me you thought him anything else. I thought him fascinating and quite distinguished. Joseph! Joseph! Yes, Master Hindley. Where's the key here? Isn't it in the door, sir? No, it isn't. Come in, man, come in. We're going to lock him out this time. And if he tries to get in, I'll shoot him. Now find the key and get me a bottle of whiskey. You've had a wretched night, Master Hindley. Wretched night, you call it? How can I stay sober with that vulture's beak inside me? He struck me in the dark, Joseph. Robbed me of my home and gold. Where's the whiskey? Dr. Kenneth has forbidden it, Master Hindley. Blast Dr. Kenneth! Give him what he wants, but Joseph. But Dr. Kenneth has forbidden it, Mr. Heath. Do as I tell you. What difference to the world if he's drunk or sober? Get out. It's too early in the morning to look on the devil. Your ingratitude, Hindley, makes me almost sad. All I've done to you, Hindley, is to enable you to be yourself. My money has helped you to drink and gamble. You see, I remember that you once gave me a place to sleep. When you might have turned me out, and I... so now I allow you to remain, Hindley. I even provide you with solace against the doctor's orders. I'll have Wuthering Heights back, you hear? I'll be its master again and turn you out, as I should have done years ago. Give him the whiskey, Joseph. Yes, Mr. Heathcliff. Mr. Hindley is beginning to whine and stutter. He needs fire in his veins, courage with which to face his unhappy life. Heathcliff, I'll have your blood, and the devil take your soul. Because now you're going to die. Well, now, you have your pistol. All you have to do is shoot. They'll thank me for it. The whole world. They'll say I did right in robbing it of a rotten gypsy beggar. Yes, they'll say that. Shoot, and you'll be master again. What a puling chicken of a man. You haven't enough blood in you to keep your hands steady. You remember that time you hit me with a rock, Hindley? And the times you shamed and flogged me as your stable boy? You were a coward then, and you're a coward now. Give me the whiskey. Take him out, Joseph. Find some place for him to sleep. He's ill. I'll put him to bed. Not in the master's room. My master here now. Heathcliff. Master Heathcliff. What is it? A lady wishes to see you. A lady from where? The Grange, sir. Why didn't you tell me where? Oh. Miss Linton. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all. Excuse me, ma'am. I was riding on the moor when my horse went lame and... and... you brought him here? Yes. That was very wise. One should never ride a lame horse. I want to tell you that I was furious with my brother and with Kathy, too, the way they treated you. I told them so. I thought they acted most shamefully. Did your brother send you here with these apologies? Oh, no. He has forbidden me to... To speak to me? Yes. And Mrs. Linton? She is also angry with you. So that in all the county, you are my only friend? I would like to be. Well... It's too fine a day to be indoors. Let's let's celebrate our friendship by a gallop on the moors, shall we? But my horse is lame and... My dear, your horse is not lame and never was. You came to see me because you were lonely. Because it is lonely sitting like an outsider in your brother's house. Lonely riding on the moors with no one by your side. Isabella, you won't be lonely anymore. Your health, Dr. Kenneth. Ah, thank you, Edgar. 
Uh, your Kathy's quite the belle tonight. She hasn't missed a mm. single dance. Not one. I'm quite worn out. What great heavens. Is that Heathcliff? I'd swear that was Heathcliff, the one in the red velvet coat. Yes, it is. I can't believe it, Kathy having him here. It's impossible. It wasn't Kathy. My sister invited him. A young girl's fancy. Her one must be careful about it. Allow it to spend its irresponsible self harmlessly in a few dinners, a few dances. I was so afraid you wouldn't come, Heathcliff. Tonight would have been ruined if you hadn't. This is a waltz. Will you? We can hold each other and no one will object because that's the way it's danced. Is it indeed? Would you honor me, Isabella? Oh, thank you, Giles. But I don't think I can, and, and besides... Nonsense, Isabella. Let me see you waltz. Will you watch me? I will indeed. Very well, Giles. I am ready. You're not dancing, Kathy. No, I'm nearly exhausted. Would the moonlight and a breath of air refresh you? Always. Come. Through there. Are you enjoying yourself, Heathcliff? I've had the pleasure of watching you. You're ever so grand, Heathcliff. So strong and handsome. Looking at you tonight, I couldn't help but remember how things used to be. They used to be better. Oh, don't pretend that life hasn't improved for you. Life has ended for me. How can you stand here beside me and not remember? How can you not know that my heart is breaking for you, Kathy? But your face is the one little light burning in all this darkness. Oh, Kathy. Heathcliff, no, I forbid it. You forbid what your heart is saying to me now. It's saying nothing. It is. I can hear it louder than the music. I'm not the Kathy that was. Can you understand that? I'm somebody else. I'm another man's wife and he loves me. And I love him. Not he, not the world, not... Even you can stand between us, Kathy. Kathy, have you seen Heathcliff? Oh, there you are. Isabella. Come, darling, it's another minuet. Quite suitable to your high moral character. I must go and find Edgar. Our guest, Celine. Heathcliff, what's the matter, darling? Why are you frowning? Was Kathy behaving horribly again? If she were not my sister-in-law, I'd say she's jealous. Lovely out here, darling. The night air feels like velvet. And how romantic the music sounds. Yes. Isabella, I want to talk to you. Yes, Kathy, come in. What is it, Kathy? I want to speak to you about Heathcliff. It's very late, and I have no desire to discuss Heathcliff with you anyway. Isabella, you behaved disgracefully tonight. In what way, may I ask? It was bad enough you're asking me, but to make a spectacle of yourself, to throw yourself at him. Captain, be careful what you say. I won't be silent any longer. I'm going to tell the truth. He's been using you. Don't you see what he's been doing? Using you to be near me. To smile at me behind your back. To try and rouse something in my heart that's dead. It's dead. I'll not have it any longer. And I'll not allow you to help him any longer. No, Kathy. Heathcliff's in love with me. He's held me in his arms. He's kissed me. He's what? He's told me he loves me. We're going to be married. Heathcliff's going to be my husband. Afternoon, Joseph. Miss Kathy, uh, Mistress Kathy, I mean. May I come in? Uh, Master Hindley is away. It's Master Heathcliff I uh, wish to see. He is in there, sitting by himself. Well, what brings you to Wuthering Heights, Kathy? Does Edgar know? I doubt he'd approve. Heathcliff. Is it true? Is what true? That you've asked Isabella to marry you. It is true, then. Oh, Heathcliff, you must not do this villainous thing. She hasn't harmed you. You have. Then punish me. I intend to. When I hold her in my arms, when I kiss her, when I promise her happiness. You'll marry her for that. Why not? It might teach you the ways of pain and let you taste the torment I'm in. Heathcliff, if there's anything human left in you, don't do this. Don't make me partner to such a crime. It's stupid. It's mad. Kathy, 
If your heart were only stronger than your dull fear of God and the world, I would have lived silent and contented in your shadow. But no, you must destroy me with that weakness you call virtue. You insist on torturing me with that cruelty you think so pious. Let me go. Well, after this, you can think of me as something else than Kathy's foolish and despairing lover. You can think of me as Isabella's husband. And be glad for my happiness as I was for yours. So Heathcliff and Isabella were married. And many months later at Wuthering Heights, during one of Dr. Kenneth's increasingly rare visits, uh, Hindley, why don't you hit yourself over the head with a hammer the minute you get up in the morning? Why? Well, if you hit yourself hard enough, you'll remain unconscious all day and achieve virtually the same results you now get with your drinking. Uh, don't you agree with me, Mrs. Heathcliff? What does it matter, Dr. Kenneth? Yes. What does it matter? I had hoped, Mrs. Heathcliff, that it did matter, that when you came here, things would change. No. Only I changed. Anyone would change in this house. Isabella, I brought you into the world. And it's a world you're not going to grace very long if you remain in this house. Dear child, I must say this to you. Go back where you belong. Listen to him, Isabella. Back to Edgar, if only for a month or two. It will mean your salvation and his. Edgar has disowned me. Oh, nonsense. That was necessary under the circumstances. But he needs you now. He does? Why? Kathy is gravely ill. I'm afraid it's only a matter of hours. What is it, Doctor? Fever and inflammation of the lungs, and there's something beyond that. I don't know. I'd call it the will to die. If she died, I might begin to live. Isabella, no one should hear you talk like this. I'm sorry. So am I. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Kenneth. Begin to live, eh? In this house, with Heathcliff, nothing can live. Nothing but hate. Hate. I can feel it like the devil's own breath on me. Hinder, you're not to talk like this. And you? He hates you worse than he does me. Each time you kiss him, he loathes you. Because it's not Kathy. Isabella... Why don't you kill him? Kill him! Well, that's the first lucid talk I've heard out of Hindley in weeks. Not very Christian talk, but at least it's coherent. Seems to make some point. I'm delighted with your improvement, Hindley. Delighted. I tried to stop him, Heathcliff. Thank you, my dear wife. Your loyalty is quite touching. Heathcliff, your curses will come home to feed on your own heart. Every agony you've given will return. Laugh now, Heathcliff. There's no laughter in hell. Heathcliff, why do you have him here? I, I can't breathe with him in the same house. Existence would be so much less interesting without my boyhood friend under my roof. Oh, Heathcliff, you poison yourself with hating him. Darling, send him away and love will come into this house. Why isn't there the smell of heather in your hair? Why are your eyes always empty like Linton's eyes? They aren't. Look, I'm pretty. I'm a woman. I love you. Let your heart look at me once. Oh, why did God give me life? What is it but hunger and pain? Miss Isabella. What do you want, Ellen? What are you doing here? I want to speak to Isabella. Well, then do so in front of me. Her brother has asked me to bring her home for a visit. He needs you with him, Isabella. Why? Why? Tell me, Ellen, why does he need her? Me, it's Heathcliff. Kathy. She's ill. Yes. She's dying. Miss Isabella Master, Edgar wants you to come at once. Tell me the truth. You're not going, Heathcliff. Let go of she me. She belongs to Edgar. If she's dying, let her die in his arms where she belongs. Let her die. Let her die. When you were young, the first time Dad let you drive the family car, 
You remember the thrill you got, the pleasure you felt as you went rolling proudly down the street? Well, that's what driving a car should be, a thrill and a pleasure all the time. That's why you should drive a 49 Ford. When you drive the new Ford, you'll feel the difference between it and the car you've been used to. Before you've gone a mile, you'll know that this is a car that responds as though it were a part of you, that answers instantly your touch and your wish. There's no fighting the turns, no worrying about starting, stopping, or passing, no wheel weariness when you're driving a 49 Ford. When you drive a new Ford, you just won't want to go back to a harder driving, harder riding, older style car. Now, there are sound reasons why the new Ford drives and rides as easily as it does. That new Ford feel was planned and built into the car when the 49 Ford was completely redesigned to give you easier, safer, more comfortable, and more efficient motoring. The solid roadability of the new Ford is the result of definite engineering advancements. Ford's new symmetrical steering linkage, new independent front wheel suspension, new low center of gravity, a new midship ride. The feeling of aliveness of the new Ford comes from the power and pickup and flexibility of the great new Ford engines, the 95 horsepower 6 or the famous 100 horsepower V8. The effect of those advancements, easier driving, smoother riding, instant response, is what we call the new Ford feel, because that's what you feel when you drive a 49 Ford. And as for appearance, well, the Fashion Academy of New York examined all cars in all price ranges and awarded the gold medal for the fashion car of the year to the 1949 Ford. Your eyes will tell you why. You should get pleasure out of driving and owning your car. Pleasure that continues over the miles and through the months. So before you settle for another new car of older style, drive the new Ford. Drive the only completely redesigned car in its field. The most advanced car in its field. The fashion car of the year. When you drive a Ford, you'll feel the difference. Now again, Fletcher Markle. And here's Act Three of tonight's Ford Theater production of Wuthering Heights, starring Montgomery Clift as Heathcliff, with Joan Loring as Kathy. Edgar, please open the window. I want to smell the heather on the wind. Very well. Is that better? Oh, yes. I can smell the heather. Edgar, isn't there a south wind? And isn't the snow almost gone? It's quite gone down here, darling. Just a few patches left. Oh, the sky is blue. And the larks are singing and the brooks are all brimming for. Edgar, will you get me something? What do you want, my darling? Some heather. There's a beautiful patch near the castle. I want some from there. Near the castle? What castle, my darling? The castle on the moors, Edgar. Get me some, please. There's no castle on the moors. There is, there is. It's on the little hill beyond Wuthering Heights. You mean Peniston Crag? Yes, that's it. Please go. Why do you call it the castle? Because once long ago, I was going to be a queen there. Will you go up there, Edgar, and get me some heather? If you promise to sleep while I'm gone. Please rest so you'll be better tomorrow. Edgar, you've been so dear to me. So very dear. Now sleep, Kathy. Sleep. I'll be back with your flowers. <laughs> Where is she? Where is your mistress? But she's not to be disturbed, sir. The master's just gone for Dr. Kinnis. Get out of the way! Mr. Heathcliff! Mr. Heathcliff! Heathcliff! Kathy. I was dreaming you might come before I died. 
You might come and scowl at me once more. Cassie. Does it hurt so much to see me dying? Well, I'll not pity you. How strong you look. How many years do you mean to live after I'm gone? Kathy, you're my life. You're my soul. Oh, my darling, hold me. Don't, don't let me go. If only I could hold you until we were both dead. Oh, Kathy. Why shouldn't you suffer? I do. I dread to die, Heath, if I don't want to die. Kathy, don't speak of dying. Will you forget me? Will you be happy when I'm in the earth? Will you say, this is the grave of Catherine Earnshaw? I loved her long ago and wept to lose her. But it's all past. Tell me, tell me, will you forget? I could as soon forget you as my own life. If you die, Cassie, there'll be no peace for me. Poor Heathcliff. Kneel down beside me. I want to feel how strong you are. Strong enough to bring us both back to life. If you want to live. No, I lied. While you held me, I forgot what life was. I forgot that life is not as sweet as this. Oh, Heathcliff, I lied. I do want to die. I want to die to escape. Why did you betray your own heart? Kathy, why did you kill yourself? Hold me, my darling. Just hold me. No, I'll not comfort you. My tears don't love you, Kathy. Heathcliff, don't break my heart. I never broke your heart. Kathy, you broke it. Kathy, you loved me. What right had you to throw away love for a handful of worldliness? I've lain in the night cursing your wantonness. Heathcliff, I found out. Misery and death and all the evils that fate a man could have hammered down would never have parted us. You did that. You alone. You wandered off like a greedy, wanton child. To break your heart and mine. If I've done wrong, I'm dying of it. Forgive me. We've so very little time. Oh, my darling. Kiss me again. He's Cliff. He's coming. Mr. Linton, for heaven's sake, go and be quick. Oh, you mustn't go. You can't go. This is the last time. No, I'm not going, love. I'm here. I'll never leave you again. Why, Miss Cassie. I told you, Ellen, when he went away that night in the rain. I told you my life, my being. Oh, you mustn't listen to her ravings. It's true. I'm yours. I've never been anyone else's. Never. She doesn't know what she's saying. Heathcliff, take me to the window. Let me look at the moors once again with you. Oh, my darling, once again. Here. Let me lift you up. How lovely the day looks. The sweet blue sky. Heathcliff, can you see Peniston Crag? Over there where our castle is? I'll always wait for you there. Till you... Till you come to me. Miss Cathy. Oh, Miss Cathy. She's gone. What are you doing here? She's gone. Miss Kathy is gone. Place her on her bed, Heathcliff. She's mine. Place her on her bed. Kathy. Leave her alone, all of you. She's mine now. You turn your last black bead, Heathcliff. Now leave this house. There's no use for words, Doctor. She's at peace now, in heaven, beyond us. What do they know of heaven or hell, Kathy? Who know nothing of life? They're praying for you, Kathy. I'll pray one prayer with them. I repeat to my tongue stiffens, Catherine Earnshaw, may you not rest so long as I live on. I killed you. Haunt me then. Haunt your murderer. I know that ghosts have wandered on the earth. Be with me always. Take any form. Drive me to madness. Only do not leave me in this dark, alone, where I cannot find you. I cannot live without my life. 
I cannot live without my soul. I can still see and hear that wild hour with poor Heathcliff trying to tear away the veil between life and death, crying out to Cathy's soul to torment him and haunt him. And that was Cathy's ghost I heard at the window? Not her ghost, but Cathy's love, stronger than time itself, still sobbing for its unlived days and uneaten bread. Why, who would be about in a night like this? Well, I'll go and see. <clears throat> Why, Dr. Kenneth, what in the world are you doing out this night? Come in. You must be frozen. What's the matter, man? Well, I, I, I've gone stark raving mad. Dr. Kenneth, what is it? I saw Heathcliff out on the moors in the snow with a woman. A woman? I saw her with him plain as my own two eyes. <gasps> it was Kathy. Kathy! Go on, man. What happened? I was trying to get near them when suddenly my horse reared and plunged and I was thrown. I called out to them, but they didn't hear me, so I followed them. I saw them both. He had his arm about her. I climbed up after them. And there he was, lying on the ground, frozen, alone, with only his footprints in the snow. Not alone, Dr. Kenneth. No. At last they are together. And when spring comes, they will lie under a benign sky where the moths flutter among the harebells and the heather, listening to the soft wind breathing through the grass. There'll be no more unquiet slumber for the sleepers in that quiet earth. <laughs> From the Ford Theater on Broadway, you've just heard Mr. Montgomery Clift starring in Wuthering Heights. Tonight's version for listening, based on the Ben Hecht and Charles MacArthur screenplay, was prepared by Rene Rubin. The original musical score was composed by Lana Domian and conducted by Cy Feuer. The Ford Theater, a full hour of dramatic entertainment, is brought to you each Friday evening by the Ford Motor Company, builders of Lincoln and Mercury cars, Ford trucks and farm tractors, and the 1949 Ford car, the fashion car of the year, the only completely redesigned car in its field, the most advanced car in its field. When you drive a new Ford, you'll feel the difference. Now again, Fletcher Markle. May a director identify the principals in our cast tonight. In the foreground, Keith Cliff was played, of course, by Mr. Montgomery Cliff who will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, The Heiress, co-starring with Olivia de Havilland. Kathy. Was played by Joan Loring. Isabella. Was Patricia Wheel. Edgar. Was played by Carl Emery. Ellen. Was Hester Sondergaard. Hindley. Was played by Hedley Rennie. Actively assisting were Gregory Morton, Robert Dryden, Alan Devitt, Miriam Wolfe, and John Merlin. Now it's the next week. Next week, our play is a comedy... A comedy which holds the record for one of the longest runs in the history of Broadway. It's an American play about a man who enjoyed life. A man who never worked if he could help it, and he usually could help it. Our play is Lightning, and our star, returning from Hollywood where last week he received a richly deserved Academy Award, Mr. Walter Houston. And now until next week, until Walter Houston stars in Lightning, this is Fletcher Markle with a good night and thank you from all of us in the Ford Theater.
Wuthering Heights, heard tonight in the radio version, was produced as a photoplay by Samuel Goldwyn, whose latest production is Enchantment. The Ford Motor Company cordially invites you to join us again next Friday evening to hear Walter Houston in Lightning. Nelson Case speaks. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.